one of the best compliments I can ever remember our band getting was somebody told me that the people behind them said, man, watching this band is like watching six instructional videos at the same time. Welcome to the Shellcats, a show about music, culture, and Memphis. As we live into our mission of building community through music, education, and diversity, we look forward to interviewing artists and musicians and hearing about how they are writing their own stories, and building their own communities. 85 years strong and with a rich history, the Levitt Shell has stood the test of time as a beacon of hope in the heart of Memphis. I can actually do that with my time. This podcast is brought to you by Orion Federal Credit Union, where a big part of us is being a big part of the community. Visit orionfcu.com to see how Orion is redefining banking. Hi, welcome to Shellcast, episode 10. Free World is pretty much a legendary Memphis band, so good they've got a brass note on Beale Street. The band was founded over 30 years ago by Richard Cushing and Dr. Herman Green. We spoke with Richard recently. He shared some memories of Dr. Green, who we lost recently. Some very poignant moments in there. He also talked about how you keep a band interesting and fun for over 30 years. Let's welcome Richard Cushing to Shellcast. Something I don't think I ever shared with you before. I moved to uh, Memphis in April of 08. I was living downtown at the time, and the very first band I ever saw on stage in Memphis was Free World. Really? Yeah, I was living downtown. You guys were playing on uh, Sunday night, and if, if I recall properly, the first song that I heard was a uh, great cover of Scarlet Begonias. <laughs> awesome. Right off the bat, it's like, I'm going to do okay in this town. So. <laughs> bad. Well, so one day over 30 years ago, what was the genesis of the band Free World? So, um, depends on how far you wanted to go back. I was I was playing in a, a country rock band based out of Sardis, Mississippi. It was, it was more rock than country at the time. And then the keyboard player put out a country single and the manager made us go country rock. And that wasn't really my thing. So myself and the drummer went down to Beale Street to see if we could find anyone that would uh, that needed a rhythm section. At that time, the only this was August of 86. At this point, the only uh, wow. things going on. Boogie was open, and Lafayette's Corner was open, and Club Handy. That was it. That was all that was going on. Wow. We wandered, wow. We wandered into Rum Boogie, and uh, Dom McMinn was the, the house band leader. And I, at that point, we sat down, and at that point, I don't think I'd ever heard music like that in my life. You know, blues or sort of bluesy rock and improvisational discussions going on on stage musically. And, and this whole, you know, this, this steeped in soul and tradition, and it just... There was gospel and country and blues and funk. It was just all this stuff mixed up together. And it was, you know, wow. So uh, on set break, I asked Don McMahon, hey, I'm, we're a couple of guys looking for a, a band, you know, anyone who might need a rhythm section. He, he gave me his business card. He told me to call him the next day. He'd go through his Rolodex and give me some numbers. Uh, sure wow. enough, he, the next day I did. And one of the numbers he gave me was Chris Lee, who had a band called Chris Lee and the Moonlight Syncopators. And they played at Lafayette's Corner, the next bar, the only other bar up the street there on Wednesdays. And so I went down there the next week and introduced myself. And as it just so happened, his bass player was leaving the band and uh, he had me come up and sit in. We play, I played, I played a set with him of music I had never heard before in my life, <laughs> but I had a good enough ear and a good enough, uh, you know, musicality to, to, to jump right up. And, and he hired me on the spot. And uh, then a few months at that point, our, and the drummer was David Skypeck, who was our longtime uh, free world drummer. The horn section about two or three months later didn't show up for a gig. I don't know. I wasn't the band leader. I don't know if that was the way it was supposed to be or not. But we played a set. And then halfway through the second set, in off the street, walked these two guys. The, the, the horn mics were still set up, but our guys weren't there. But these other two guys walked in and pulled out their horns and started playing with us. Lo and behold, it's Herman Green and Noki Taylor. Wow. So the, 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 the core of Free World, myself, David, and Herman, and Noki – we all sort of came together on Beale Street in the fall of 1986. By October of 1987, Willie Waldman and myself and, and Clint Wagner walked, went down to Beale Street to talk to Herman. He was uh, the house band uh, leader at um, King's Palace, and we wanted we wanted to start a band, uh, but we wanted someone in the band that had some credibility. We were just a bunch of you know young white hippie 
University of Memphis Jazz Bows, you know. We, but we wanted somebody in the band that, that had some, some street cred. So we went to Herman and said, hey, we want to start a band and we want you to, to start the band with us. And he said, he looked us up and down and was like, well, I will do this, but you got to be serious about the music. So it's like, <laughs> yes, sir. You know, that's what we're all about. So that, that we started in October of 87 at the South End. Our, our first two gigs, we were called the Herman Green and Jimmy Ellis Blues Review. Okay. And, uh, wow. then at one of our rehearsals, we had a, a brainstorming session and came up with the name Free World. We played every Tuesday at the South End for a long time, and it, it turned itself into New Daisy gigs, which were packed full of crazy people on psychedelics and, you know, light shows and weird stuff going on behind us and us stretching out. You know, back at that right. point, there, there really wasn't a jam band scene, if you will. There was, you know, Santana and the Dead and the Allman Brothers, but there wasn't, wasn't all these other, you know, we, we didn't really have a template to base ourselves on. We were just herman and us so we were playing grateful dead and coltrane you know and it uh, sort of combined itself naturally into what it was we kind of turned into also steeped into that tradition was the memphis thing the souls the, the blues the the songwriting that not just you know being a, a noodle band but actually trying to write some songs you know because it's a deep tradition of songwriting in this town and so that was also a, a deep part of what we've always been about and our records are I remember back in the day when there was a cat, when there were record stores and the guy at Cats was like, where, where do I put this? What, where, what, what do I put, what category do I put this record in? Is it jazz? Is it rock? Is it psychic? What is it? I don't know. We, we never, I don't know that we've ever particularly cared about, you know, genre of music, what style we play. What, what do we play? We play free roll music and that's just what it is. And you can, you know, dig it or not. There's a but we play on Bill Street. You don't like this? You, there's 16 other bars. You take a walk, you know. But there's apparently been enough people over the 35 years, 33 years we've been a band that uh, have dug what we do and kept us rolling, and um, you know, bought our CDs and bought our T-shirts and kept coming to gigs and loved us and supported us and you know, it's it's a fortune. I mean, how many bands last 33 minutes? You know, much less 33 years. One, one of the questions I actually have on my list literally is very few bands last 30 years. I don't care if you're talking local, regional, international, whatever. What's your secret, man? Well, of course, it's not the same guys, right? You know, part of, of right. the bands, what's gone on is there's been a lot of rotation over the years. Other than myself, we've had a lot of other people come through the band. We've, we've been a school of sorts, a lot of uh, younger uh, cats in this town will come through the band for a, a while to, to learn what it is they need to learn before they move on to uh, greater, bigger, and better things. Um, mm -hmm. the, the see, part of what Herman taught us was to take the music seriously, but don't take yourself too seriously. So it's we've never had – I we try to steer away from you – know, a lot of bands have, have an attitude somewhat, you know what I mean? And right. uh, Free World – and I think a lot of Memphis musicians – it's. It's not so much a, uh, there's not a lot of competition going on. We're all in the same fraternity or sorority, if you will. We're all part of the same sort of scene and we, we help each other out and we play gigs together. And, you know, so I think that helps to the longevity and just the fact that we we're not genre specific, I think, never tied us to, you know, we started in, in 87. So we, we could have easily been an 80s band or been a 90s band and been a grunge thing. You know, we just always sort of play music and we play every kind of music that we that we like. We play blues, we play jazz, we play funk, we play R&B, we play soul, we play reggae, we play rock and roll. We, you know, and it's also when, you, when you've been a band this long, there's maybe 400 songs or so on our master song list. And maybe you play 30 in a night. So it's it's looking out at a crowd, knowing how to read a crowd and figuring out what the best 30 to play tonight are going to be, you know, or, or open it up and let people request stuff. And so they get the songs they want to hear and we get a little extra money in the tip bucket and everybody's happy. And it's because sure. it's, it, I, I think because it's deeper than the music, really, the, the true answer to your question is because it's it's as Herman tried to teach us. It's not just a, it's not a, it is a business, but it's not about just the business and it is music, but it's not a, just about the music. It's about a sense of community and having people want to come back on a regular basis to see you, not just because they really want to hear Scarlet Begonias, but because they, they feel like they belong. They're, they're part of the scene. They, they know the guys in the band and the guys know them and they turn an eye to them. And it's, it's a bunch of hugs and it's a bunch of shit. It's, it's a sense of community and family that that makes it more than just a band it makes it greater than the sum of its parts and that's probably what it's held it together the grateful dead shows that you guys do uh 
close to on an annual basis, I guess. I mean, that, that should be sort of a, sort of an insight into what the attitude of the band is because, uh, having been, you know, what, 12, 13 years I've seen you guys play now. And, and it is, it's a very communal thing. I've, I've always admired that you go out and you say hello to people. You talk to people between the sets. You, uh, you do look out there for what people are, are looking to have a good time with that night. And I've always admired that. Well, thank you. It, it's one of Herman's things, you know, it's making it into a, more of a family than a business. And that's when uh, when the band first started, did you mean for it to be as communal as it's become? One of the great things when I go to see you guys play, don't ever really know who's going to get up on stage with you. And I think that's awesome. Well, we don't either. <laughs> Matter of fact, a lot of us, we don't even know, we don't even know who the band is right tonight. So being that there is a jazz element through Herman, from the very beginning of this band, you know, jazz is communicative. It's not, it's certainly not a jukebox. You've got, you've got a head of the song. You've got the, you know, the, the statement of, of, of the melody, what the song is, and then it opens up and you can play off each other and you can, somebody goes off on a motif this way and you follow them and the rhythm section goes, you know, so the music being communicative has always been a part of what the band is, especially mm-hmm. with Herman. And also if, to me, and I think really music, it, it's a language, right? It's 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 if you can speak that language, it overruns everything else, the your skin color and your culture and your religion and anything else. If you can speak that language, if you can get up on stage with people and open your ears and make your noise in concert with the other noises that are going on on stage, listen enough to insert yourself and do it in a way that makes sense and it sounds good and makes people groove. And so, you know, it, if you can speak that language, then then you're in. And, and the band is always, I mean, I'm, I'm more than happy to let anybody get up on stage with us if, if they can speak the language and they, they can contribute to the conversation. And especially, I love to do that. I love sending the Beale Street ambassadors back out into the world. You know, they maybe they play there. Who knows where they're from, Paris or Peoria? It could be anywhere. You know, and they play and they've got a gig and then, you know, but they've, they've come to Memphis or looking for this certain thing, you know, the, the, the Memphis is Mecca for Western culture and music in general, right? And so people come to, to Beale Street and they've walked up and down the street. They've, maybe they've been here all weekend on Sunday. They The last bar they go by on the way back to the hotel and it's Blue City and it's free world. All oh, these guys sound cool. And they come in and maybe on set break, I get to talk to somebody. They're like, well, yeah, actually, I, I, I play some guitar. Well, hey, why don't you sit in and play one? Really? Yeah, sure. Come on. And they'll get up and play and then they'll go back to Paris or Peoria and talk about, man, I went to Memphis. I was down on Beale Street. I met these really cool cats. They let me get up and do, dude, dude, I got to play on Beale Street. You know what that means to me? You know, and you send those kind of people back out into the world. It not just helps our band, but it helps our city. It helps Beale Street. It helps every waitress that works up and down. You know what I'm talking about? It's it creates this positivity back out into the world. And and I I, I take that somewhat seriously as far as uh, being a represent representative of the Memphis music heritage and of Beale Street and of our history and, and our culture here, I try desperately to not take for granted. I tell my wife on a regular basis as I'm heading out to work, heading down to Beale Street, you know, in about in less than an hour, I'm going to be playing music on one of the preeminent music streets on the planet. You know, and I don't, I don't want to ever take that for granted. I don't want to ever, oh, I got to go, you know, play another gig, blah, blah, blah. You know, I always want to look at, because also the other thing about it is you never know who's going to walk in on the street. We've had so many people up on stage with us that weren't some guy from Peoria or Paris. It was, you know, the drummer from, from Prince. It was the horn section from Justin Timberlake's band. It was, you know, and I've kept a list. It is extensive. It's huge. The people that we've gotten to play with on Bill Steve Cropper, you know what I mean? Just these people that happen to be in the room that we invite them up on stage. And next thing you know, we're jamming with somebody, one of our, one of our, our heroes, you know, it's, it's, um, you never know what's going to happen on Beale Street, and that's that's a beautiful thing. You're you're so welcoming to uh, musicians in the band and on your stage. When there isn't a, a, a permanent quote unquote opening in the band, what do you look for when you're looking for a musician? You know, um, Free World. I've described it in in the past to people as it it has its own it's its own entity. It has its own will to live. This cre- I, I I feed the dragon. I take care of the dragon, but I am not the dragon. Right. You know, and, and oftentimes it seems like the band will perpetuate itself about the time somebody's wanting to leave or needing to leave or desiring to leave or being asked to leave. 
there seems to always be somebody else on the wings that that is sort of waiting to come in and, and oftentimes i i have had to, on occasion you know put out cattle calls and had auditions to try to find people but for the most part fortunately for us because we're well known because we have a good reputation because right. people know that you know the music is good and the people are good and the vibe is good and it's a semi high profile gig and it's decent money and some travel and what, you know because it has a, a reputation of its own it will draw people to it primarily right. you know there is a bar i prefer people to, to be able to play at a certain level but that hasn't always been the case we've taken people into the band who really grew over the course of them when they first started with us maybe they weren't really where they needed to be but maybe and it's not all my decision of course but maybe the guys in the band saw something or felt something or it's also it's just as important i think about the music is the hang right i mean you want to have guys in the band that you that you like that you want to sit down and eat dinner with that, that you can joke with and laugh with you don't want to have somebody in the band that you know that, that doesn't doesn't fit in uh, personally so that, there's that too but you know there's uh what do we look for? I, I I don't know. That's that's a very esoteric question. <laughs> it's it's uh, it, it's hard to say what, <laughs> what what the band draws to itself and what it is. And you know, I, not to say, I mean, there is a certain point of being hired on a ninety day probationary period kind of thing. So we can all if if after a certain point in time it's not good for either side, then people go their own way and it's it's okay. You know, there, there's kind of that element. There's that element there too. Right. But uh, for the most part, it's uh, I don't know. We've been we've been really lucky. We've been really fortunate that the band has perpetuated itself on and on for decades now. It's crazy. That is amazing. I've seen you, uh, of course, several times at the Shell, and this is a very self-serving and selfish question. Tell me some of your memories of the Shell, please. Silver, that is, if not the certainly one of the top three places this band has played in the course of, of our history. We love the show. Seriously. We've been playing there since we've been a band, since way back, you know, and and, and and thank God for for the Levitt Foundation. But we were there way before they came in. And uh, there's something about that place that is magical, you know, and especially if, if you can, you know, we always most often played there with you know, multi-band situations, whether it was a, a Jerry Day or an Earth Day or, you know, some sort of thing going on. We, and I always try to make sure – we played right at sunset, right? So you're you're playing when the sun is out, but then you play after the sun is set. And that that point at the shell is just magic. And, uh, you know, it's just the vibe of the place and the sound of the place and and the history of the place. And and I, you want some specific memories? Um, I can give you two that will be with me till the day I die. Uh, we played there once, and uh, as we were playing, it started to sprinkle, and then it started to rain. And we, we sort of looked up and we grabbed all our gear and we pulled it back. You know, normally you sort of set up in front of the actual shell. Well, we pulled ourselves right. back underneath right. the shell and kept playing. And all the people who had been dancing on, you know, the dance floor off the stage got up onto the stage in front of us and they danced in the rain while we played. And it's almost like uh, you cannot get a better wow. compliment than people dancing in the rain to your music, right? You know, just. Stuck, you know, dance like no one is watching when these people were dancing like it didn't, you know, just and it wasn't just a couple of people. It was a lot of folks dancing in the rain. Now, I'll never forget that. another memory. That is one. My, my wow. oldest son was probably two, maybe three at the most. And uh, my wife, we were playing and my wife was sitting like over in, on, on the stage left wing. And uh, his little brother was uh was just a child just a baby and he she, she got wrapped up in, in paying attention to ian the baby and oliver while we we're playing took off walking towards the middle of the stage right and she, by the time she looked up and realized what was going on he was headed straight for the rack of horns right there's a couple of saxophones and he's he headed straight for for the brass instruments and she's like oh my god you know he's, he's gonna he's gonna crash them you know and he walks out there and he grabs a shaker and he walks over next to me and he starts shaking the shaker I didn't see you. Uh, I didn't see or know anything. Oh. I got a photo of this too. I didn't see or know any of this was happening. I'm playing and singing, but I felt a presence and I turned to my left and there was nobody there. And I went on back to doing what I was doing. Then I looked back again and I looked down and my son, it's the first time it ever happened in my life. My, my blood is playing music with me on stage. And it was just, you know, tears bursting out of my eyes. Wow. And I was just, uh, 
And there was another time, uh, yet another time we were playing that while we were playing, there were children and dogs that were sort of playing hide and go seek on stage around our gear and the drums. And, you know, we're just jamming away and his kids are running around. And you, know, you don't get that anywhere else. You don't get that at the Orpheum. You don't get it at Music Fest. You don't get it at Beale Street. You don't get it. Any, you don't get children playing hide and go seek around your amp anywhere. Shell. That's 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 a, that's a lone soul is, is situation. It only happens there. That is such a fun thing. It really is. I I, I miss seeing the kids dancing at the shell, man. I really and truly do. Want to learn more about how you can support the Levitt Shell and its mission of building community through music, education, and diversity? Head to levittshell.org. You can read up on our 85-year history and check out our schedule of live and virtual events. Visit our shell shop to grab all the swag and find out ways you can participate in our mission, whether that's through donations, volunteering, sponsoring a show, or becoming a member of our shell circle. Once again, that's levittshell.org. Long as we're uh, long as we're going down memory lane, of course we uh, we lost Herman Green this year. Uh, give me give me an absolutely wonderful memory about Herman. I'll tell you my heaviest memory of Herman Green. Free World had, had only been a band a few months. Please, and uh, we had uh, back to back gigs in Oxford. So ended up he and I ended up in a hotel room together, and I, had, I, had, I hadn't known him for you know a year and a half tops, maybe a year that much. And it's it's three or four. We'd let, we'd play the gig, and we'd gone somewhere after the gig and partied. And you know, of course, we came back to the hotel room. We're sitting on opposite beds, you know, in our skivvies, passing a bottle of rot gut vodka back and forth, you know, which is Herman's favorite. And uh, <laughs> and it got quiet for a minute. And he looks up at me. He says, um, "You know, it wasn't that long ago that the people in this town would have strung me and you up by a tree as of being in this room together." And being, you know, wow. a little high, a little drunk, a little, uh, little late at night. And, and, and the depth mm-hmm. of that statement, you know, the, the thought that literally the men in Oxford, like only 25 years ago, we're talking about 87, you know, only about 25 mm-hmm. years ago that people in this town would have come here, taken me to the square, put a rope around my neck and killed me just for being in the same room with Herman Green. That and that was his life, you know. He he did a whole. You know, he was he was born in 1925. He did he was born 1930s. So he did a whole lot of you know touring around back in the the 40s and 50s. When if you saw the movie The The Green Book, you know that was his world. You know, and mm-hmm. knowing where you could go and where you couldn't go and where you could wow. eat and where you had to go around in the back and where you could go to the restroom, where you could drink water. You know, that was his. It, it's it's it, it's heavy for me, but it was it's not my life, you know. But when he sat there next to me and said that to me, I looked him square in the eyes and was like, because I I love this man. This man is, became my father, you know. And to think that he would have killed me sure. just for being in the same room with him was whoa. That that is a very intense moment, and what a brave thing for him to be able to yeah, share with sure. you as well. Wow. You have accomplished so much at this point in your career. What else do you have left that you would like to be able to accomplish? Well, I, I, I started the story earlier. Uh, Don McMahon giving me his business card and, um, and turning me on to Chris Lee, which, which turned into Free World. And then as, as, so uh-huh. my entire career basically came through that business card given to me by the band leader at Rum Boogie Cafe. At this point, I am the band leader of the weekend house band at Rum Boogie Cafe. <laughs> so that big circle has closed. Uh, and that's being not as I, you know, you, we all get older and uh, hauling around a PA and setting it up in a different room every other night or every night uh, gets old. <laughs> so to have landed a house gig. Sure on Beale Street where you know I don't have to tour anymore the world comes to me and so that's uh and and then uh, that's that's one accomplishment we we just just recently sort of uh, latched onto for good and uh the other thing is Herman all the things Herman mm-hmm. was um the most prominent adjective I could think to describe him is is as a teacher in every way, he was not music and, and life and, and love and business. And he, he, he taught 
it purposefully he actually was the the, the jazz studies the head of the jazz studies department at Lemoyne on for many years so he actually you know really was a teacher teacher but you know in life he he is a, was a teacher and he taught me so much and he gave me I wouldn't have the career I have if it weren't for us going to him and asking him to start this band with us because we I don't know that we'd be playing on Beale Street right now we're just a bunch of white kids you know jazz guys and rock and roll dead dudes and whatever and and but because we're her, all Hermes in the band, sure, come on in. You know, you want to play Blue City, you want to play Rumba, you want to play the New Jersey, <laughs> sure, come on in. You know, Hermes in the band. Yeah, well, so that him having given me and us that, I feel like, especially now that he's passed, it's now my obligation to do the same. So mm -hmm. the other goals the band needs to reach are to continue to be the free world school, to continue to allow these young University of Memphis college students who are you know, who have the gumption to get out of the practice hall and come down to Beale Street with their horn and see if they can find somebody to play with and get up on stage with the band because you're asked to, you're allowed to, and then to, to get up there. And because there's, there's a big, huge difference between music theory and applied music, right? <laughs> and not that you don't need music theory and not that it, it isn't helpful, but there's something about like digesting that and then having it become part of you and then eliminating it so that you now use those tools to communicate, right? The main thing that music is about, especially in a, in a public forum and in a, in a way that people, you know, in a bar, not everyone's paying a hundred percent attention to the band. They're talking to the friends and they're drinking and they're hanging out and they're doing whatever. But really what you're trying to do is you're trying to say something to these people. You're trying to, to get them to sort of stop their conversation for a minute and go, whoa, no, that's uh, the best compliment. One of the best compliments I can ever remember our band getting was somebody told me that the people behind them said, man, watching this band is like watching six instructional videos at the same time. <laughs> it's like, that's wow. it. So, it, it, but wow. if you take that and, and give back to the younger generation and, to, and just offer the opportunity for them to get up on stage and, and feel what it feels like and to understand how, how a band works, you know, there's a lot of ego involved in music sometimes, and you really, you have to really set that aside if you're going to, you, know, you have to subjugate your your personal musicality for for the group. I've I've heard it. I just saw it recently. It was a meme. It said, uh, "Play the music, not the instrument." Right. So you kind of you you got to right. subjugate your own personal ego, and 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 serve the song. And serve, so it, you. The feel that, especially as a horn section, there's there's three guys that are basically functioning as the right hand of a keyboard player, and you've got to play things, you know, you got to play the right notes, you got to have the right articulation, you've got to hold, you know, it, it's you got to be in tune. It's really something that these young horn players. It's one thing to play in in the, the band in, or in a practice room at the University of Memphis in the, the music department. It's something else to come out on the street, and uh, and I think that part of the the band's goals at this point are to, to continue to to further what Herman gave us by giving that to the next generation. I think you're going to do a phenomenal job with that because uh, like, like you said, Herman, of course, was a teacher and he did it for a job, but Herman taught because he wanted to give music and he wanted to give gifts to people. And Richard, everything I ever hear from you is the exact same thing. Well, thank you. I, I, um, I've never been a, a teacher teacher, but uh Maybe not intentionally, but uh, I know an awful lot of people that have looked up to you and, and uh, definitely uh, taken a lot of inspiration from you. So you are, whether you know it or Thank not. Thank you. I, I, one thing I've always really tried to be conscious of, I mentioned this earlier, is to not, not take the situation I've found myself luckily enough to be in for granted and to, to, to recognize every day how fortunate I am, how 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 many other people would give their left arm to, to be in the situation. You know, there's, there's layers and everything. I'm not Bruce Springsteen, you know, but I, I'm not, you know, playing in my bedroom. I'm, right. I'm playing on one of the preeminent music streets on the planet, you know, three times a week. And I, 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 I never want to take that for granted. I always want to recognize my fortune and to, uh, to share that because it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a joy. It's a privilege. Well, I, I can certainly attest for having seen you on probably 30 different stages in my lifetime now. I have never seen you with anything but a Jerry Garcia smile on your face. Well, so. you know, it's <laughs> – well, I'll, I'll tell you, um, I don't care what happens at work or home or with your family or your friends or whatever. 
you know, whatever kind of weirdness or has occurred during the course of the day for me, when I get up on stage, like the first two notes of the first song, and that's all gone. One of the things about music is you really, wow. to, to do it properly, you really have to exist in the moment, right? You, it, I've often looked at music like, like, like mm -hmm. a train, right? It's blowing down the track. And each one of the cross ties is like a bar of music, right? And, 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 and you're steady rolling forward and you got to pay attention to the one that you're on and you got to be looking at what's coming at you, but you can't really pay a whole lot of attention to what you've already gone beyond because you can't do nothing about it, right? I mean, it's, it's, you, I don't care if I played the greatest solo of my life or if I screwed up worse than I ever have in my whole world, you know, that, that bar of music is gone. And there's another 5,000 coming at me in the course of the space of the next, you know, hour or so. And so it, you really have to exist wow. in, in, in the breath you're taking right now and open your ears up and listen to what's going on with your fellow bandmates and what's going on with the crowd and what's going on up and down the street. And, you know, what do these people want and what's, what's happening with the tip bucket? And, and it's, it's, but just it, for me anyway, it's just, and, and that creates such a joyful situation for me personally, that smile on my face. It's because I'm, I'm existing in the moment. This breath I'm taking is, is the only one I may ever have. It's, it's that, it's, it's that sharing. It's, 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 it's speaking that language. It's, it's using the communication of music. I mean, music can be, it's fine if music is a jukebox. Some bands, you know, play the same songs in the same way night after night. And that's, there's, I'm not putting anybody down. That, that's great. No, 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 no problem with that. But what we do, it requires for us to, to really zone in on each other and the music and what's happened, what's happening right now. Uh, that there's something about when your heart's beating and your breaths are being taken and all that exists is that, you know, that's there's something there's some kind of joy there that I don't get in much other spaces in my life. I don't know if anyone else does, but that that to me, that art, that thing, I don't even know how to describe it. That experience of life is is rare and it's uh, it's a beautiful thing for me. That is a gorgeous thing. You're right about that. Richard, do yourself and us a favor. Remind everybody about your social media where they can uh, get a hold of you and follow you and everything. FreeRollMemphis.com is a brand new website. We just got it up recently. And uh, it's got everything you could ever possibly want, photos and bios and our gig schedule and whatnot. Uh, you can catch us uh, these days. Uh, we're playing every Friday and Saturday night at Rum Boogie Cafe. And then we do a trio, uh, three world, if you will. We do that on Wednesdays at Rum Boogie. And then uh, <laughs> hopefully our, our Sunday night Blue City Cafe gigs will come back soon. Um, you can always catch us on Facebook. It's it's free That'd world. And um Instagram, it's like it's free world band, and you can find you can find our music anywhere. It's uh, on Spotify, it's on iTunes. It's uh, we have I think uh, seven records, an EP, and a DVD, and they're all out there waiting to be consumed. Feel free to um, avail yourself of its many charms, and they should be. They should be. It's good stuff, Richard. There's uh, there's so many good reasons why you're one of the greatest uh, Memphis music ambassadors that we have. We so appreciate you. Thanks for being so good to the show all this time. Thank you. Silver, for your time it's been today. a joy and a pleasure and an honor. Thank you for having me. It's been way too long since I've seen you, friend. We'll get together soon. So so. I want to say thanks to Richard Cushing. He's always been a great friend of the Levitt Shell. If you'd like to learn more about Free World, just go to freeworldmemphis.com and do yourself a favor. They released a video called D Up, Here's to Diversity. It's a joyous celebration of the diversity of the Memphis community and music. A lot of cameos from some heavy hitters in the Memphis music scene, too. If you'd like to help us out a little bit, we're at levitshell.org slash virtualbucket. We promise you, every penny that comes in goes right back into free music for you guys. Thanks again for joining us on Shellcast. We'll see you soon.